Hey guys, Rob here and welcome back to the channel. Well, today you join me for part two of how to build the Pocha or Pocha Lamborghini Huracan. Now, uh, we'll get straight into it. So if we look at the instruction booklet, uh, pretty much the first steps uh, are assembling the interior, which is the same as the Aventador model. So uh, what we've got here is the assembly of the seat panels. Um, these just basically are the inner rubber section just clips onto the uh, the hard plastic back. Uh, now mine were quite conform, um, deformed slightly so I did have to actually add a little bit of glue around the edge of the hard plastic. Um, I just used some super glue to basically glue the rubber on because it kept pulling away from the actual hard back of the seat. So uh, I just did that on both sides to get a nice good fit. Otherwise uh, they go on pretty easily. Now this is where the modification already begins on this model. As you can see, uh, it does have stitch lines molded into the seat, which is quite nice. Uh, now I want to do white colored stitching on these seats. So I'm going to do the same method as I did on the Aventador uh, Pocha model. So uh, if for those that haven't seen it, uh, this is what I have done with this seat. So. Uh, as you can see, I have painted in all of the white stitching. Well, nearly all of the white stitching. There is another stitching line that runs down the center and through the center of the base cushion. Um, but I thought that just looked a little bit too busy. So um, I've just basically stuck with what you can see here. Now this is a really easy, simple method uh, to use on these potcher kits. Uh, and I'm gonna show you that right now before we get into it into the rest of the build. So uh, let's just get this out of the way, the instructions, um, and this is the factory seat that we have not done anything to. So I'm gonna show you how to uh, paint in all the stitching. Now, because I'm using white on this uh, particular uh, stitching detail and I'm going over black uh, rubber or soft rubber plastic, whatever it is, I'm actually going to use this Tamiya Surfacer Primer in white. Um, now this is a more of a solid white than just using white paint. Um, so I'm going to use this. Um, now this is a enamel uh, and I'm going to be using some uh, enamel paint thinner X20 uh, for the cleanup. Now you will need uh, lots of Q-tips. Uh, I use these ones because they've got a, uh, a, a flat end on them which is really handy for this method I'm going to show you. Uh, and they have a point the other end which is good to get into small little gaps. So that's basically all you are going to need. If you want to do the stitching in another colour, um, I still recommend uh, using enamel paints uh, and my go-to is Tamiya. So that's all you need. You need the, uh, the paint colour for the stitching, uh, the same enamel thinner to remove the excess paint, some Q-tips uh, and obviously a paintbrush to apply the paint. So uh, I'll just show you, we'll start with this side here. So I'll start with this uh, outer stitch line uh, and then this other stitch line here. So I'll actually, because these are so close together, I'll do them both at the same time, just because it's easier, you'll see in a moment. So what you wanna do is basically just fill all the uh, stitch lines or the stitch holes uh, with your colored paint. That's that easy, really. So um, make sure your paint is not too thick so it does flow into the holes and just apply it all the way around. Now I try when I do this not to put any on the hard plastic, uh, although the thinner will, will remove it so it's not too much of an issue there. And this actual uh, stitch line has a uh, like a bead line in the middle of it as well. So I'm doing that too. Now you can do this, um, if you don't get all the holes filled in the first time, uh, you can come back and do it again. Uh, it is a repeatable process, which is good. And it's just, it, it does take a bit of time to do uh, the whole seat. So that one seat that I did yesterday, uh, took me around an hour to do the whole seat, uh, but that's not too bad for the for the result. So as you can see, um, 
just get most of the, just get the paint in all the little holes we're going to wipe the excess off anyway um, but you don't want to just slop paint around everywhere as well so I'll just try and get it in all the holes I might just add a little bit more in some of those spots there and that's basically it for the application of the paint so I've covered the stitch line and now I'm not going to really let this dry too much I'm just going to use the um, enamel th thinner right now and I'll also just have a little bit of paper towel as well just just to blot um, the excess thinner off the cotton tip I don't want that too wet because I don't want it to pull all the paint out of the stitching and then just using the flat part I'm just going to start rubbing the excess paint away now the trick with this method is to keep using uh, new q-tips so you don't want uh, the q-tips obviously are soaking up the excess paint and then it'll just start to smear the paint as you can see there so just keep throwing these away uh, and don't reuse it just keep using clean new ones uh, and that will do the trick just dob the excess off on some paper towel and then just wipe it away keep the q-tip flat against the surface that way it won't drag much paint out of the stitching lines you can also use the other end of the q-tip when the flat end gets dirty as well uh, just to get some of it off now as you can see the enamel to me a thinner uh, does not damage the uh, the plastic or the rubber that these seats are made out of uh, it's quite compatible with it so you don't have to worry about uh, any negative effects uh, of the thinner so again just keep using uh, new fresh q-tips just to keep the uh, the excess paint off and from dirtying up the plastic or the rubber I should say so as you can see there that has basically uh, removed all the excess paint uh, and you can also use the paper towel just to give this a bit of a wipe down as well uh, and there you have a painted I don't know if the camera will focus there you have a stitch line uh, into the factory seats there you go it's focused um, so it's that easy so um, you just take your time with it work your way around um, but that's exactly the method I used on this seat here and as you can see uh, it just adds so much more detail uh, than just a plain black seat so uh, you can add any color in there red yellow orange green uh, whatever you you want to do to match your exterior color of the model um, but it's a really easy uh, really easy tip or trick uh, to really enhance the interior detail of these uh, kits so now I think we'll do a little bit of time lapse because it's going to take me a bit of time to finish the rest of this seat
Okay, so as you can see, uh, that took a little bit of time, even with the, uh, the time lapse running, um, and that's pretty much both seats now done. So uh, I'm just going to add a custom Lamborghini decal to the headrest like I did on this particular seat. Uh, and I've also got a side bolster decal here as well. That might give you a little bit of a clue as to uh, what the final paint color is gonna be, but uh, that is how you do the stitching on these seats. So um, yeah, it came up pretty good. Uh, I, like, I like this method. It's a really easy one to do. Uh, and uh, yeah, it looks the good. So uh, that is the seats done for now. Now the next thing I'm going to move on to uh, is the interior pan of the model. Now um, this is just a big large molded plastic piece here. Uh, you can see where the, uh, the accelerator pedal and the foot rest, rest sit on. Um, but I am going to add some carpet flocking to this whole uh, floor area, the sides of the center console and also this rear section uh, behind the seats as well. So I've done a tutorial on how to apply flocking powder. Um, there'll be links in the description to that video if you wanna see that. Um, but this is another process that will take a little bit of time. So uh, we'll do this one on the time lapse as well. So this is flocking the interior.
Okay, so now I've let this dry for a couple of hours uh, and you can see that uh, the flocking is done and it looks like we've got some carpeted uh, interior here, nice and furry as it should be. Um, so yeah, that is good to go now so we can put that off to the side uh, and I'm going to start the assembly of all the uh, rest of the interior pieces. So I have actually repainted these plastic parts. Um, just because some of those uh, parts in the kit uh, do have some plastic mold lines in there. So I've just simply used some sanding sticks and I've sanded off the, the molding lines on the plastic. And then I've just sprayed everything in a uh, Tamiya uh, matte black. Uh, and then after the matte black, I then spray all the parts in a uh, if that can focus, in a flat clear. Now the flat clear gives it a nice silky, uh, silky smooth finish, um, which matches uh, the, the seat material uh, a lot better as well. So um, yeah, so now I'm going to start assembly of all these parts. So uh, these parts were in a, um, just a matte black. I've sprayed those in a gloss black. Uh, and this section of the center console uh, was all silver, but the car I'm replicating, it's black. So I've just painted all of this black uh, and then all these trim pieces uh, will go on and cover all the other bits. So uh, this will all be time lapse um, and let's get into the assembly.
Okay, so that is the uh, center console uh, fitted in there. Um, probably the trickiest bit is these little metal dividers here in between the switch gear. Uh, a couple of those I had to just use a tiny drill bit to open the hole up to get those to fit in there. Um, but I went ahead and fitted a couple of the decals just on the switches and buttons. Uh, these are the Tremonia uh, photo etched accelerator and footrest. There's also a brake pedal as well. Uh, these are much more realistic than the plastic parts that come with the kit, so I can highly recommend those. Um, and the seats just clip in as well and they are able to slide forwards and backwards as well. So uh, that is that stage. Next stage we're going to move on to the dashboard.
Okay, so that wraps up the dashboard part of the assembly instructions here. And as you saw me just do, uh, this was another Tremonia photo etch set, which actually has all the speaker grills for the audio system. Uh, and it has all the uh, air conditioning vent grills as well. So just a nice little extra touch there uh, to detail it up a little bit more. I've since added all the decals to all the steering wheel as well. Um, and yeah, pretty happy with the way that came out. Uh, definitely looks better since I've painted all this compared to the molded black plastic. Um, but uh, yeah, really happy with that. Steering wheel is going to turn uh, and that is going to basically sit into the interior section like so. So um, yeah, pretty happy with the way this model is coming together so far. Uh, I'll think I'll wrap it up for this stage here uh, and you'll join me for part three where we'll keep moving forward uh, with the assembly of this Porsche 18 scale Lamborghini Huracan. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode and uh, make sure you click that bell notification so you don't miss the next uh, episodes. But until next time, thanks for watching Rob's Model Cars.